What's going on nerds, Mark here, back with a new and another tech video. When it comes to technology, we have yet to do a review of an actual computer. So today we have our very first laptop review featured on the channel, so I'm very excited to announce the Victus 15 HP brand. <laughs> Just want to say shout out to Victus slash HP for sending this out. I am very pleased to take on the challenge of reviewing a laptop. I build all these computers, I work on computers all day, but never have I really sat down and reviewed a laptop or a full computer. So this will be a good challenge for me and hopefully you guys like the content. But we'll start out with an unboxing. Unfortunately, the box took a little damage when I was ripping off the shipping label. I was trying to make the box look nice for this video, but she took some heat. Okay, so just one piece of tape at the top. That's what it opens up as. Slide these egg cartons out with the machine in there. That's pretty much it. I'm gonna put that on my lap. We have a little pamphlet, not even a manual, it was like information, probably a manual. Right on the side of the box, we do have our power adapter. Again, I see HP using this three prong Mickey Mouse looking shaped wire. So I don't know if that's gonna be a trend going forward. And that's what the plug is gonna look like actually. Another wire here. And the other wire is just the other half of the power cable. That's pretty much it in terms of wires. Empty box. So we'll unbox the laptop. It's just like a little book. Kind of opens up cardboard. And the laptop is just sitting right there. Free floating. They did ship this in this packaging. So hopefully the packaging they had, the die cut, was strong enough to keep this laptop from breaking. But well, we're just going to slip this laptop right out of its sleeve. And first impressions, this is what she looks like. Got the Omen... Victus V, same size as the diamond. That's their kind of selling point on how they made the logo. It definitely receives your fingerprints if you have a little sweaty palm syndrome. It's a very sleek looking laptop made of composite plastic. By the way, the retail of this laptop is $649.99 MSRP USD. For the material that you get for that price, it's not too bad. We do have the little Victus stamp text here with their name, and you can also see it says designed and engineered by HP. Back is pretty nice. If I'm not mistaken, this is a dual fan design, so we do have some increased cooling coming out of this guy, at least this generation of Victus. We're going to open this guy up right here. We'll get all into detail when we do the review. And if we take a look, this is what it looks like when you open it up. We have this little sleeve protecting the keyboard and there's our keyboard fresh out of the box looking pretty nice, I would say. I like the actual width of the machine. Kind of has a nice size um, in terms of fitting a full-size keyboard in here. We do have a number pad and the keyboard kind of goes all the way from left to right which I actually like that. You can see it kind of ends up at the very end of each side, which most laptops don't do. And I think that helps with the design of the machine in general. But we do have Bang & Olsen speakers in here. Um, we got like the V-shaped mesh design of the actual speaker vent, whatever you want to call it, mesh. And so I like how they stay consistent with the branding. And we have a different rough textured plastic feel at the front here um, where the screen meets the body. And we have a Victus V stamper right at the bottom again, making sure you know who it's made by. Another title at the bottom left as well. The coolest thing I would say about this machine is that it has 144 hertz panel. So that is actually pretty dang nice for the price. Having a high refresh rate on a screen really like enhances the quality of the machine, I would say. Or it seemingly enhances the quality so like it perceives it as better, I don't know. After using a display with a high refresh rate, I just really can't go back to 60 frames, I think. I just don't think it's gonna happen at all. But just a little first impressions of the keyboard. I can see myself really liking this keyboard, actually. I mean, it's very soft to the touch. There's not much action, so you don't really have to press too hard or you don't have to push too far for the keys to actually respond. So if you're a quick typer, you could probably do a lot of fast typing on this machine. Very low noise as well. It's not silent, but it's pretty minimal. We have a nice large trackpad here. Very smooth, um, pretty standard trackpad. I do like how they don't have any markings on it. Sometimes I, they like put markings on the trackpad and I just don't like that. It should remain clean. It's a right click, you know it's a right click. And lastly, the only thing I can point out that stands out to me is the Omen button itself at the top right of the machine where the number pad is. I hope that opens like Omen Gaming Hub or it's a preset button that you can customize. So it's nice to see some sort of macro or customizable button there other than the function keys. I'm not gonna turn it on for the unboxing, but overall the close was pretty silent, I would say. Pretty nice close, let's do it again. Very silent, 
very airy clothes. <laughs> also, you can see that we have a complete vent system. So where the machine splits, we do have some room for ventilation. And I think Omen and Victus is really going for better airflow on their machines. Definitely will increase performance on similar parts. So kudos to caring about ventilation. That will probably make the laptop a little bit bigger, but honestly, these super thin laptops nowadays, I'm just not sold on them. I just don't see how they can have the same performance at such a thin body panel. Um, there's no real space for much. And plus, you probably have more ports available on the side. So on the exterior of the laptop, starting on the right side, we have an HDMI 2.1 output, which is pretty fancy to see. We have one USB port, we have one RG45 network port, and we have a USB-C cable port. On the left side, we actually see our power port, our auxiliary jack, and another USB port. On newer laptops like the MacBook Air, you just don't have any space other than a USB-C dock to fit anything. So kudos to making sure the laptop isn't paper thin. So overall, everyone, that's going to conclude our first impressions unboxing of the Victus 15. And this has been Mark from NoisyPixel.net and stick around for the review. Due to the size of this review, parts were removed to accommodate video length. Although this video covers most points, please read the full review on NoisyPixel.net or find the link in the description below. Let's start with the specs. The Victus 15 hosts an Intel 12th Gen i5, 8-core processor, 8GB DDR4 RAM, upgradable to 32GB using two 16GB RAM sticks, a GeForce GTX, not RTX, 1650 GPU. The screen features 15.6 inches of 144Hz 1080p HDR and a 512GB storage SSD. The laptop comes out of the box with Windows 11, so say goodbye to Windows 10. A few more selling points include a fully backlit keyboard, number pad, and function keys. On the exterior of the Victus 15, is a prominent Victus logo to remind everyone what laptop you have. You can also find sleek touches with typography around the machine outlining some hardware internals such as the Bang & Olsen speakers. These speakers cover up the top section above the keyboard up until the screen, so add that to the selling point list for sure. We can see a huge bezel, at least for my taste, and another V logo. This design choice comes from multiple factors, but it seems like it's just adding size to this machine. The Victus 15 has an immense wrist section, which actually was painful to use for long gaming sessions, as it somewhat indented my wrist, leaving a mark for hours. Flipping the laptop over, we see a dual fan design larger than previous generations of Victus notebooks. This is supposed to provide higher performance due to more consistent internal temps, but we will discuss that a bit later. Additionally, the screen flexes and bends when pulling it up uncaringly, so be aware of how you're opening the laptop. The device is decently thick too, but that leaves space for the machine's rear exhaust, so we can tell that Victus was really focusing on airflow to bring their line of products to a new threshold. The fans on the bottom take air in, and hot air exits from the back. Finalizing the exterior of the build, which is plastic if anyone is concerned, we see many in and out ports, and that's where the thickness comes in for the assist. There are two USB ports, a combo audio jack, a full SD card reader, one USB-C, non-charging and non-thunderbolt, one ethernet port, and one full-size HDMI 2.1 port. The versatility can be great for a student or entry-level designer who takes pictures and needs an SD card reader easily accessible, or they need to present to their class via the projector with HDMI hookup. The Victus 15 leaves no one behind with full consideration of multiple buying groups. This laptop is not exclusively meant for professionals or serious gamers, but we will get into that. Let's get more specific now. The trackpad is a bit sticky for my taste, along with being quite large, and I find myself having to move my fingers a bit extra distance due to lack of registration. The keyboard backlighting is nothing but sexy with a slightly purple tinted white balance LED and intense brightness and clarity with the keyboard's letters. Its brightness is just missing a little more oomph to eliminate the imperfect white tint, but nothing is ever perfect, is it? I recommend keeping it on for style points if battery life isn't a worry. Unfortunately, there is only one brightness setting for the backlighting, it's all or nothing. Further, although not the end of the world, there is no touchscreen. So your newly developed habit of grabbing the screen with your grimy fingers is not to be found when using the Victus 15. Lastly, about the keyboard, it takes a bit of getting used to, as the low profile keys are a bit contrast to desktop keyboards. The keys are also extremely quiet and comfortable to the touch. On the other hand, I could see someone getting cramps from typing on this for long periods of time simply due to how low the keys are 
and how long the laptop's body is. Overall, key spacing and size are within reason and suit someone who types without looking at the screen. I would also like to reiterate that the keyboard's reach indents my wrists, so the trackpad and body should be closer. We hurtin' out here. There is much to cover regarding the overall performance of the Victus 15. The initial boot lasted approximately 15 seconds, bringing you to the initial setup. After setting up, the boot to Windows time was 1 minute and 20 seconds. Upon first glance, you notice the laptop is preloading a bunch of software the general demographic for this machine won't want, such as McAfee virus protection, Tangent Games, whatever that is, HP support assistant, and other free trial pop-up spam. But what I do like are the Omen Hub and the calculator buttons, as they offer a unique flavor to the board whilst making it quicker to customize the Victus 15. The Omen Hub will display computer temperatures, specs, and other specific tweaks open for change. The high refresh rate makes this laptop feel premium, and every mid-tier laptop should have this, especially if you are gaming. Before we dive deeper into performance, let's talk about battery life and sustainability. I performed a test where I left the Victus 15 closed and on sleep mode and didn't use it for 24 hours to open it up to see what the passive battery loss is like. On day one of leaving the laptop on, closed, and unplugged, it had 92% battery, only draining 8% of its total capacity. So we could say that this will last about 10 days closed in sleep mode. However, I did have trouble with response time after opening it up after 24 hours. The laptop took more than a minute to remember where it was with extreme delay and lag when opening up software, browsers, and more. I also experienced significant typing lag and just overall poor performance after taking it out of sleep mode. On day two of leaving it closed and unplugged, the computer booted up with about 80% battery life, which is on par with the day one math. On the other hand, the computer randomly drained another 10% dropping it to 59%. This was quite strange and reminded me of old laptops and phones where their batteries started to go bad. Not a good sign on a new machine. Battery drain continued to accelerate during this session of use, discrediting a 10 day battery sleep period and possibly lowering it to three to four days passive battery. Next, if using the Victus 15 for an entire 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. day, expect a need for a light charge by midday or a full charge around 7 p.m. I have more talking points about charging, but that leads me to speak about the Victus 15's performance when put to the test. If using this machine for editing or design, expect major battery drain. Being wireless is essentially not an option. If this is your college education laptop for production, hopefully an outlet is nearby. If you are a hardcore professional, you clearly wouldn't be looking here. But for a student, young adult, mild gamer, or entry-level designer, the Victus 15 can serve as a place to start. No laptop size is enough to compensate for what's visually needed when making videos, so I strongly urge you to use another monitor with this laptop if possible. Also, I fried a good 30% of battery really quickly by just 20 minutes in Adobe Premiere Pro, so still not a good sign for the battery life. This is not to say this machine couldn't be great for other designers at a lower price. Moving on to external monitor use via the HDMI 2.1 port, the Victus 15 has various frame rates at different resolutions. The monitor used was the Omen 27U, which is HDMI 2.1. With 1920 by 1080, the max external frame rate is 100Hz. When using 2160p, the max is 60 hertz. Seeing the highest refresh rate with 1920 by 1200 at 120 frames per second, I was able to run 100 hertz to 120 hertz with no performance lag on Apex Legends while using the external 4K monitor at 1080p. Granted, the laptop is plugged into the charger, and I was playing the 3-on-3 three -three mode. In the main battle royale mode, you see consistent frame rates of 60 to 80 hertz using an external display. The performance is much smoother with an external display, taking a load off the laptop's power supply. This is the best way to take advantage of the Victus 15. Let's go even deeper, moving into the nitty gritty of game and frame rate performance. I played five rounds of Apex Legends in which the first four rounds were smaller three on three games. The first round went smooth with no frame drop or performance lag on high settings, plugged in. In the second round, there were two or three bursts of frame drops to 20 frames per second that lasted five to 20 seconds at a time, which was not 
that cool. I played the third game, tried running lower settings unplugged, and could not run more than 50 frames per second consistently, mostly 30 to 40 frames per second. The laptop was also relatively warm at this point, while the fans remained loud. Still, we are here to put it to the test. I plugged it back in, and the laptop ran smoothly again while being pretty warm at 80 frames per second or more. The Victus 15 would sometimes be at 60 frames per second, but overall above 60. I found the laptop to run best when plugged in, and some settings lowered a notch or two, especially on AAA games. However, even though the laptop can handle max settings here and there, on games like Apex Legends, I was sometimes hit with those pesky frame drop lag sessions. On the fourth game, I did not log the frames to test to see if that was hindering performance, and no frames dropped at all while running smoothly. Plugged in at high settings. During the fifth game, I played a larger main game lobby to test the limits further. While recording my frames, there were no lag or frame drops at high settings for most of the match. The further the game progressed, the more difficult it was to maintain frames above 40 to 50 frames per second. That is when I officially believed you must lower the settings on AAA games for this device. All you have to do is have the charger plugged in and you're golden, at least to hit 60 frames per second. Since you will be overcharging most of the time, I feel like the laptop won't have a long lifetime. Finally, with less demanding games like League of Legends, you can run at 144Hz. Max settings, although the frames vary between 100 frames per second and 110, with lows of 85 and highs of 144. The PC runs quite loud while running these games as well. Low graphical quality titles like Hearthstone, Teamfight Tactics, and even Rocket League are totally playable while the laptop is unplugged. Sometimes in Rocket League, frames would drop, especially if the laptop is placed on a surface where fans are not getting proper ventilation. For the most part, you will still need the device to be plugged in to have the best experience. Unplugged gaming is simply not consistent. I also tossed on Forza Horizon for a RAM test, and 8GB is not enough. There were on-screen RAM warnings, so be cautious on high settings, drivers. With that said, browsers that eat up chunks of RAM must be closed to have consistent performance, so Discord and your game of choice are all that should be running to preserve RAM. The Victus 15 does have a great variety to offer to multiple blind groups and demographics, making it a versatile purchase. Out of the box, the machine will work for most games and all around users such as media consumption, web browsing, and other day-to-day -day work. The battery is manageable, but could be far better for this type of configuration. Growing up, I remember gaming laptops were always way too expensive, more expensive than just building your own PC. Now you can have a laptop made for gaming without even hitting the $1,000 mark. Making the Victus 15 a great product for those looking to expand their digital horizons. The issue is that this is branded as a gaming laptop. And for a serious gamer, you would not be purchasing this, as it slumps on high-end performance, battery life, and build quality plastic. Instead, one should likely spend a little bit more for RAM, higher-end chips, and most importantly, getting away from that 1650. In 2022, the 1650 shouldn't even be considered by a serious gamer. Noisy Pixel is giving the Victus 15 gaming laptop a C+. For the price of $7.99 and considering the demographic of gamers that this is geared towards, along with a day-to-day -day laptop user or designer, this is a decent choice for the price. The hardware features many useful in and out ports, leaving no one at the door. The body can just use a bit more style and a better GPU. Best Buy also doesn't offer a 16GB model of this rig, making it more difficult to upgrade the RAM. Noisy Pixel is a group of gamers who work hard to deliver news, reviews, previews, and more. Please subscribe to keep up with all of our future content. See you nerds. <laughs>